Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now this video is a follow-up to a previous video with the same title and the title of that video is Coordinate and Non-Coordinate Bases. Now in this video we're going to look at what is meant by the terms coordinate and non-coordinate bases and how each is derived using vectors. It then looks at what the commutator can tell us about the difference between the two types of bases. A number of examples are given to illustrate the concepts involved. Now in the previous video, um, I just looked at, I just started, I spent a lot of time calculating and I didn't uh, look at the commutator. I didn't really look at the difference between the two bases. So I'd like to complete that task in this video. And that's the point of this follow-up video is to really finish that uh, and clearly define the difference between the two, what they are and uh, how they are different. All right, so let's make a start. Now, maybe I should hide that a bit. Okay, now in differential geometry, as we saw in the last video, the metric tensor on a manifold can be calculated using only the generalized coordinates without referring to the Euclidean basis of an embedding space. So we don't need to use the, the Euclidean basis vectors in some sort of Euclidean space in which we've embedded our geometry. Now the key idea is that the metric tensor G mu nu, or whatever indices you want, encodes the intrinsic geometry of the manifold and can be expressed directly in terms of the coordinate system used to describe the manifold. So we're going to let u1, u2, un be the generalized coordinates on the manifold in n dimensions. These coordinates define a coordinate system that covers the region of the manifold. And the metric tensor in these coordinates is given by g mu nu is all of this. And I did this in the last video, so I'm just starting off at that point again, uh, where x, capital X here, represents a position vector in the embedding space um, and doesn't necessarily have to be Euclidean space, often is, but doesn't have to be. And the partial derivatives dx, dx, and you know, are the tangent vectors to the coordinate lines. And I did all that in the last video. That's so the last video really focused on all that. All right, so however, we can describe the metric tensor purely in terms of the manifold's intrinsic properties. We can do so using the coordinate basis vectors, d mu, and I'll use this differential geometer's notation, which is d, d u mu. Uh, the metric tensor components are then, so I'll use a differential operator with the subscript mu uh, to indicate which particular term we're talking about. Now the metric uh, tensor components are then given by g mu nu is this uh, product here, this inner product, where this denotes the inner product on the manifold. This takes vectors as arguments, it takes the inner product of them and generates a scalar. Now for a surface parameterized by coordinates u mu, so we'll look at an example, if the position vector x of u uv, sorry uv not u mu, uv, so the surface parameterized in terms of the coordinates u and v. If the position vector x as a function of u and v is given, the metric tensor can be computed from g11, because it's a two-dimensional surface, um, dx d mu, the inner product of that, or g12 is dx du, dx dv, or g22 is dx dv, inner product with dx dv with itself. Okay, remember dx du and dx dv are the tangent vectors to the coordinate lines on this surface. Now these expressions do not depend on the embedding spaces, Euclidean bases, but rather on the manifolds, manifold, sorry, intrinsic geometry. And just to give you a picture of that, so here's our position vector, which generates all these coordinate lines. And that was the focus of all the calculations I did in the last video. Stop hiding that. There's a, uh, uh, focus on all this and then you can see to each of these coordinate lines you have these tangent vectors dx du and in this direction dx dv all right so two-dimensional manifold here this surface position vectors generate each of these coordinate lines in the u direction and the v direction so in summary it's entirely possible to calculate the metric tensor using only the generalized coordinates of the manifold this approach is actually the standard practice in differential geometry where the focus is on the intrinsic properties of the manifold independent of any embedding space. Okay, so let's have a look at um, 
the uh, coordinate basis and then we'll go on to the non-coordinate basis. Um, and I'm going to be clearer about this. This will be the focus now of this video, the difference between the two, what they are and what the difference is. So our coordinate basis is derived from the partial derivatives with respect to the coordinates of a manifold. These basis vectors align with the coordinate grid of the manifold, which I've shown you on a diagram previous slide. For generalized coordinates, u1, u2, up to un on a manifold, the coordinate basis vectors are d, du, mu, mu is one, two, up to n, or just simply the differential operator uh, subscript mu, where mu ranges again from one to n. So uh, consider a two-dimensional surface parameterized by coordinates u, v, the two coordinate basis vectors are then d, mu, d, u, sorry, and d, v. Okay, d, d, u, or d, d, v. Now, in this basis, the metric tensor components g, u nu, mu nu, sorry, are given by g mu nu. Remember, where they range from one to two because it's a two-dimensional surface here, and it's just the inner product of these, which is as as I showed you on the previous slide. Okay, next one. All right, now on a spherical surface, for instance, the coordinates with coordinates theta and phi, two-dimensional surface d theta, d phi, okay, there's your coordinate basis vectors. All right, now the non-coordinate basis. See the coordinate basis came from the um, these operators with respect to the coordinates. Now the non-coordinate basis or an holonomic basis, uh, by the way, the coordinate basis is also known as the holonomic basis, but in the non-coordinate basis or an holonomic basis is a set of basis vectors that do not necessarily align with the coordinate grid. These vectors can be arbitrary and do not need to be derived from the partial derivatives of the coordinates. Non-coordinate bases are often used in more complex geometries or in practical applications like mechanics, where it might be convenient to use bases aligned with physical features of the system rather than coordinates. Uh, for example, cylindrical, consider cylindrical coordinates R, theta, and Z in Euclidean 3 space. The coordinate basis vectors are dr, d theta, dz. Okay. A non-coordinate basis in this space could be er, e theta, ez, where uh, you can, uh, I might just point out, see this dr, this is the uh, differential geometers notation and the vectors here are more of a physicist notation um, but they they're referring to the same object to a vector basis vector um, now just notice here e theta is not a coordinate basis vector because it includes a factor of one on r that one on r there rescales this dd theta and changes it so we're not dealing with our coordinate basis here we have a non-coordinate basis all right, let's just keep going then. Coordinate basis in differential geometry. In differential geometry, the metric tensor g mu nu is often computed using a coordinate basis. Most of the time, general relativity and so on, we're going to work in the coordinate basis most of the time, but not necessarily always. So for a surface parameterized in coordinates u, v, with position vector x as a function of the coordinates u and v, then your metric components are g11, is this inner product? G12 is that inner product? G22 is that inner product? And G21 will be the same as G12, assuming there's no torsion in our manifold. All right, now, a non, is that going to be in the way? Yeah, I can hide that now. All right, uh, a non coordinate basis in mechanics. So, in mechanics, a non coordinate basis might be used to simplify calculations or align with physical directions. So, for example, in cylindrical coordinates, the non-coordinate basis vectors E R, E theta, E Z can be more intuitive for describing rotational motion. So, a non-coordinate basis is more appropriate there. <clears throat> okay, let's summarize what we have so far. Coordinate basis derived from partial derivatives with respect to coordinates, e.g., d mu, d d u mu. The non-coordinate basis arbitrary basis vectors not aligned with coordinate lines. Okay, so they can be different vectors not aligned with coordinate lines. So e theta, one on r, d d theta. Right. A 
And we saw those coordinate lines in that diagram I showed earlier. All right. Commutator. Now, this is what I didn't cover in the last uh, video. Um, and so we're going to have, now have a look at what the commutator has got to tell us about the difference between coordinate and non-coordinate bases. So, so a commutator in um, coordinate bases. The key property of coordinate basis vectors is that they commute, partial deriv derivatives commute, meaning the commutator of any two coordinate basis vectors is zero. Mathematically, this is expressed as uh, the commutator d nu d nu equals zero. Um, and that's because of the way we calculate. So for a two-dimensional manifold with coordinates u and v, the basis vectors that we saw earlier are du and dv, and the commutator of du and dv is du dv minus dv du. And because uh, uh, partial derivatives commute, that goes to zero. Okay, so the commutation relation holds because partial derivatives with respect to different coordinates commute. All right, uh, the commutator in non-coordinate bases. So in a non-coordinate basis and holonomic basis, the basis vectors do not necessarily correspond to the partial derivatives, as we saw earlier, with respect to the coordinates. These basis vectors can have a more complex structure and do not necessarily commute. All right. So let's have a look at something there. <clears throat> For a non-coordinate basis, E mu, the set E mu for whatever dimensions you've got, up to n, n of them, the commutator E mu E nu is generally not zero. Okay, it's still given by E mu dot E, e mu minus E mu dot E mu. Still the same commutator, uh, but look what happens. The result of this commutator can be expressed in terms of structure coefficients. Um, is two covariant, one contravariant, which quantify the non-commutativity of the basis vectors. And we'll see an example of this, so um, you'll see how this works. So let's consider cylindrical coordinates, r, theta, and z, with the non-coordinate basis vectors, er, ddr, e, theta, which is the one that's not a, a, a coordinate basis vector. It's a non-coordinate basis vector because of the one on r scaling vector, and ez ddz, which is a coordinate basis vector, okay, but the set together is a non-coordinate basis vectors. The commutator of these basis vectors can be non-zero, so for instance e r e theta, which is the commutator of this object here, let's have a look at that. Okay, and what we now have is, that's the structure coefficients in this case are this. Uh, yes, sorry about that. I jumped a page with that. Ooh, apologize, shaky hand there, sort of thing. I thought I was missing something. So, to compute this, note that e theta includes a factor 1 on r. So, er dot e theta is ddr 1 on r dd theta. Okay, so we apply this partial derivative using the product rule. So, ddr 1 on r gives us minus 1 on r squared dd theta. Plus, then we have 1 on r times ddr dd theta, which is just this partial derivative of d with respect to dr d theta. Okay. On the other hand, the, the, uh, the opposite of that, e theta dot er, the reverse of that, is 1 on r dd theta ddr, which is 1 on r d of dr d theta. So the commutator combining these is er e theta is this object minus this one which is, as we saw up here, that's all of this, minus this. So we have all of this, minus this. Well, these two cancel, and we're just left with the first term, which is minus one on r squared d d theta, or minus one on r squared e theta. Okay, so let's now have a look next page at the, commit, at the structure coefficient. All right, so the structure coefficients in this case are C R theta theta is minus one on R squared. All right, so the final summary of all this is the coordinate basis. Basis vectors are partial derivatives with respect to coordinates and they commute. Non-coordinate basis, basis vectors do not necessarily correspond to partial derivatives 
They can be rescaled by other things or it can be different vectors altogether. You're free to choose a non-coordinate basis uh, if you wish, if it's appropriate to the problem you're dealing with. And these can have non-zero commutators. So the, so the commutator E mu E nu gives you this structure coefficient and expand it in terms of the basis vectors E alpha. All right, so that's the difference between a coordinate basis and a non-coordinate basis. So the coordinate basis are uh, basis vectors are partial derivatives with respect to the coordinates and they commute. And the non-coordinate basis do not necessarily correspond to partial derivatives uh, and can have non-zero commutators. So they end up with this. All right. I hope that's helpful to everyone. Um, much clearer and finishes the job now that the first video didn't. All right. I hope everybody's happy with that. I hope you all have a good day. I wish you all well. Um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.